How do you guys? How's it going? So while the ping is high and the old uh, beverages here are low, we're going to be going over something um, that I kind of thought would be a really good idea to touch on. Is like you know, obviously I've covered a lot. I've covered every weapon here in Modern Warfare, multiple videos dealing with the best class setups, in-game performance, just doing some fun class setups and everything in between. So in this one, I kind of wanted to dive into my thought process and how you guys can kind of adapt it depending on, you know, if it's a new season, after patches, after updates, after nerfs, no matter what it is, and kind of custom tailor some classes you know to your own play style and what you're trying to accomplish yourselves because with my best class setup videos what i try to do is take multiple factors into account and look at the attachments the weapon whatever category it's in look at the weapon stats and how all those things tie together to uh you know to ultimately give you the best setup for the weapon for in-game performance now with Modern Warfare, one of the most phenomenal things about this game to date is the fact that you have so many attachment options, you have a lot of weapon options, and you have a lot of game modes and a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, when you like regular multiplayer and Warzone are two completely separate things in terms of the game modes and how they play and what you, it, the requirements that you'll have for weapon setups and weapon loadouts and how you acquire those setups and those loadouts. Now, unlike some of the past Call of Duties, you actually get 10 class slots off the rip, unlike some of you know, the, the classic Call of Duties where you only get 5. So you have plenty of loadout uh, you know, sections, you got 10, to set up multiple classes for multiple different situations, and you have the ability to not only chain, not like, you know, not only to switch between those classes in game, uh, in terms of regular multiplayer, but also to edit those classes, which, I mean, really, like, I mean, I'm a huge fan of that, and I dig it, but that's almost an unfair advantage, you know, if you're being honest. But, Let's, uh, let's kind of dive into the meat of this video, and this is something I'm sure a lot of people is going to kind of skip over, but if you're a real Call of Duty fanatic and you love playing Call of Duty, this is something that you can carry over into any of the past Call of Duties, and more importantly, into the future Call of Duties along with this one, because this one's what it's about. But so you have assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, marksman rifles, sniper rifles, and melee options for your primary. So, sticking with, you know, just logical, like, just logic in general, uh, with your assault rifles, that's going to be primarily, you know, your medium range engagements. You can set these things up for anywhere from short range to long range. Uh, and then with your SMGs, you're dealing primary short to medium. Shotguns ideally are going to be short to medium, but if you know you depending on the game mode, you know they can be anywhere from short to long. You got slugs, you got hardcore, which sends your standard shotgun up into the medium to potentially wrong, long range category. Uh, you got your LMGs, which are war zone dominant in my opinion. Marksman Rifle, they share their space in terms of regular multiplayer in Warzone. Sniper Rifle, same thing there. They are very, um, you know, relevant in multiplayer for quick scoping and regular sniping. And then in Warzone itself, it's mainly just about, you know, fulfilling its sniper role. And the only primary melee weapon at the moment is the Riot Shield, which isn't you know it that that gets really that dives into just individual play style and how you want to use it unless you're getting damascus you know I, a lot of you guys that are following the channel and the class setups are on that damascus grind so i mean ultimately you're going to be using every weapon and this video is kind of dedicated to just setting up uh class setups that will you know in the end lead towards better in-game performance for the game modes that you play and I can't you know I can't touch on every weapon every class setup every attachment in this video this is just to give you a generalized idea 
so now with uh like with the assault rifles going down right here the highest level that i have seen through all these is 71 for the m4a one because it has the most attachments and is one of the most versatile ars in this game excuse me while i take a sip of this beverage right here ah there we go so it's one of the most versatile and debatably one of the most op assault rifles in the game but that's just because of all the stuff you can do with it you can easily play short medium long range depending on your setup and it holds its own in war zone very very well uh but so again because of that we're going to use it for for the example that we're going to be going with right here so uh you have one two three four five six seven eight nine different attachment areas that you can focus on and we're not going to dive into every individual aspect of this but the point is is so now you need to take and ask yourself what game modes am i playing what is my play style and you know what am i trying to accomplish so i mean i would say that the majority of people that are playing modern warfare playing call of duty just gaming in general we're all trying to have fun, chill out, but, you know, better performance and doing well in the game definitely increases the enjoyment that you will feel when playing the game itself. So, you know, you want to you want to have the edge. You want to be able to have the best setup. You want to be able to have as much of an advantage as you can over other players. And in games like this, the attachments that you throw on your weapon definitely contribute to those factors. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to kind of speed through this. In the event that this is your first video, just hit up my best class setup videos for the best all-around classes for each weapon. But if you're wanting to set up your own class that de that deviates from that based on your play style, then that's what this is for. So now, if you want a more aggressive class setup, you need to focus on your ADS attachments, which will deal with mainly your stock, your rear grip, ammunition attachments play a role in that. Because if you're throwing on larger magazines, that's going to add to your weight, which in turn you know reduces your ads time along with you know anything that could be clunky uh, like your optics or uh you know your barrels your muzzles but you want a good balance because if you take and try to achieve too fast of an ads or you try to boost your mobility too much in here in modern warfare it is going to take and kind of throw off your recoil management it's going to dig down your accuracy and it's not good so you got to balance it out plus there is a you know like a, a mobility cap anyways in terms of what you can achieve in game and that ties into them one trying to you know make it to where it's not too op and also keep with a realistic standard because they've done they've done a phenomenal job in this game with you know actually just in terms of how the weapons operate and how they play in game so they I, i'm sure they want to try to keep that you know in tune with the attachments because it's like with a lot of the other cods and just a lot of other past games you know certain things are extremely unrealistic and i'm not one of those people that like to complain about a game's realistic it's a game you know what i mean it's like when i want to enjoy weapons i get out here i shoot i train I, I run and gun you know all day and that's that's whenever you know those things actually matter and in a game i'm just here to have fun chill out but i want my performance to be good and anytime they can include those realistic factors while still keeping it you know what it is as a game i really appreciate and respect that so yes yeah, so like Anytime you're wanting to play extremely ag aggressive and maybe, you know, basically just play it in the short range with the ARs, then, you know, just focus on your ADS attachments, but you but you got to take it weapon by weapon. The M4 is, like I said, it's a good baseline. It's a good all-around weapon. Uh, but if you're playing Warzone, you need to focus on the medium to long-range engagements. So with that, you can typically count on extending your barrel. You want to have a suppressor. Just because of how, you know, Warzone plays out in general, it's a big advantage to be able to hide yourself, you know, in terms of the auditory signature that you'll have. So, you know, being able to suppress that and not show up on people's mini-maps. 
and be able to maintain your accuracy at medium to long range so that will typically always require under barrel attachment you'll probably want to throw on an optic so you just have better visuals at those extended ranges while still maintaining your ads time so throw on the stipple grip tape it's best to avoid the no stock option at the moment because of the uh, the, the nerfs that it did in season four with the no stock so whatever the um, the ADS improvement is with the actual stock attachment, in this case it's the Forge Tac CQS. That's what you want to throw on, and there's there's a variant for that for all the assault rifles. Uh, then when it comes to long range with the ARs, you can do it. Uh, with the M4, you have the ability to throw on the 458 SOCOM rounds, which makes it a, like it pretty much turns it into a marksman rifle. Um, with the appropriate attachments and I've got videos to turn most of the ARs on here in the marksman rifle So you can just search those on my channel But that is what you're going to be dealing with and the M4 is a great gun for warzone and definitely a great gun for multiplayer with the appropriate attachments but that's Pretty much everything I want to touch on with that for the AR sector because I don't want this video to be too long now going to the SMGs, let me take another sip of this because my, my flipping, my gizzard's dry as it gets at the moment. Ah, there we go. So with the SMGs, baby, this is something that's also been, ver every class here has been affected by the nerves that they, you know, brought out in this past season, like the mid-season, season four update. Um... But with a lot of my best class setups before this point included the no stock option, um, it's hard for me to choose a, a best SMG at this point. I still like, my favorite is the Bison, but it's not the best gun in terms of overall performance. It's like if you run into somebody that's still running like the MP5 with the solid class setup with the 10 millimeter rounds, even after all they've done at the MP5, you're still going to lose your gunfight if you have the PP19 Bison, but with you know just in terms of your general average play on um in multiplayer or warzone my the bison is the one that i opt out for uh but the uzi i mean all the subs are good as long as you keep them within the respective engagement like zones which would be short to medium range preferably just short range um but we're still we're going to be going with the mp5 to kind of showcase some of the attachments um it's easy to go overboard with the the fast ads and all of those things with your smgs but you got to remember what you're going to be competing against and keep in mind your play style and the game mode so it's like you you need if you're going to be a smart call of duty player you need to adjust your play style to the class setup and the weapons you're using and vice versa to everything that's actually within your control and now that can get a little overwhelming and confusing especially if you're only able to play the game on at the best a casual level or you know like i guess most people would be below a casual level and you just want to be able to hop on the game and go with a cookie cutter you know class setup rather that be blueprints or a class setup that you got via a youtube video which the class setups you find via YouTube video are typically going to be your better options because there's normally, you know, some time and effort that goes into establishing the attachments that are used on the weapon and a lot of game time played with the weapon itself and multiple variations. With that, I digress. We got subs, and it's not just about the MP5, it's about subs itself. So now after the no stock nerf, you're better to go with like the fss close quarter stock option as it is for the mp5 and then whatever ammo att uh, you know attachments they got with the um with the mp5 we got here it's either 45 round mags or the 10 millimeter rounds the 10 millimeter rounds shut people down a lot quicker but the 45 rounds mags attachment is still very viable depending on the game mode so with all this being said i'm, ma I'm mainly focusing on you know either your regular core multiplayer game modes or warzone itself so with that said 10 millimeters normally the way to go but if you're playing some you know hard point things like that having the 45 round mags with the regular uh you know mp5 setup is actually more of an advantage even though it slows your ads time down 
a wee bit uh, especially since you don't you're not really able to utilize the no stock attachment as much as before you still have your stipple grip tape not to mention it's a submachine gun so your sprint to fire speed is going to be better than most of everything else you run into anyways especially your ar players so no matter what weapon or class setup or you know anything you're dealing with you need to take and start working on your pre-aiming because that gives you an advantage over everybody so it's like you can have a like with sniper rifles it's considered hard scoping so let's just say for ars for example you can take and have the slowest ads time set up in history with an ar and as long as you're pre-aiming you'll still you know outshoot any as long as your accuracy is good, you'll outshoot any submachine gun with the fastest ADS attachments because you're already pre-aimed and you're good to go. Uh, and with and with that continuing, even though like with your ARs, you can set them up to play as subs, and there are ways to set up your subs to play to the medium to long range engagements, primarily just the longer end to medium range engagements but it's safer and more consistent to just stick with your ARs for your medium to long range and stick with your subs for the short to medium range uh, I mean I know whenever you're working on Damascus you're going to be pushing them to the extremes of either way um, but when you're actually going for in-game performance just keep in mind ARs are meant to be ARs and subs are meant to be subs and everything beyond that's meant to be what it is as we'll get into that uh, so with that said, I know we didn't touch on every individual attachment aspect, but like with what I just had said, you know, with the, the ARs and the subs, that's what you need to know between your subs and your ARs. But now, let's get over to shotguns. So shotguns have always been and will always be a very controversial, um, you know, weapon class in Call of Duty because they're very easy to use but they do have a limited range but here in Modern Warfare the range seems to be pretty extended to I mean to a closer to realistic standpoint like if shotguns was as you know powerful as they are IRL within this gaming s sector uh, it, the game would be unplayable because I mean you know you, you can kind of just point and shoot but up close, I mean, it can definitely be frustrating when you're trying to, you know, use an AR or sub setup and then, you know, you walk around the corner in a building or something and somebody just fills your face full of pellets from, you know, a 725 or any of the shotguns in here. And they've, they've been nerfing these things for a hot minute. Um... And we're not going to spend too much time on these because these do change frequently and they I, they're going to change more and who like tomorrow they could change uh the, the thing i would recommend and this is just this is not just a self-promotional thing would be to check out my best class setup videos for these shotguns because they actually are very helpful in one of my one of my most um you know viewed sectors in terms of class setups but uh there's all these shotguns are so different and from one another unlike the ars and the smgs like with the ars and the smgs obviously every gun's different um, but the shotguns, like between the Model 680, the 725, and the VLK Rogue, just all completely, just almost unrecognizably different beasts, especially once you start throwing on uh, Dragon's Breath rounds and everything else. So now going over to LMGs. All the LMGs have actually turned out to be relatively similar in the overall scope of things. Um, but the PKM is still the god of LMGs. And my best PKM class setup, you, like, let me tell you, check that bad boy out. And if you want in performance, you know, LMGs are something that has always been pretty OP in Call of Duty. Um, and especially in this one, like the PKM in Warzone is just, I mean, it's it's Rambo level good. You know what I'm saying? Like Rambo Terminator, if, if flipping Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone was to take and stick their do jigs together and make a baby, it would come out as the PKM. 
Um, and all the other LMGs are good, but I've run into a lot of frustration with most of them. Um, but the PKM range true. And really, my best class setup for that holds true for just the overall aspects of the LMG. So go check that out. Uh, now for the Marksman Rifles, these bad boys, um, it's kind of a love or hate relationship just depending on your play style. So let me take a sip of this right here. I really apologize for this video being so long, but um, if I was to touch on every aspect that I would really like to touch on, this video would be about two hours long. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to condense it as much as I can while still providing the information that I want to and that I feel that's, you know, necessary and beneficial. But, you know, okay. So with that, we have the one, two, three, the three primary marksman rifles was the EBR-14 MK2 Carbine Car 98K. Then they added in the crossbow and the SKS. So... Our, you know, our marksman rifles are either semi-automatic, we got lever action, we got bolt action, we got a crossbow, which, um, IRL, I've de I mean, I've dealt and have a lot of experience with all these forms of weapons, except for crossbow, I've never been that big into, uh, into any kind of bow shooting, um, so I'm just gonna call the crossbow, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a crossbow, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, you know, the SKS or EBR, semi-automatic, cars, bolt action, M2 carbines, lever action, there you go, there you have it. Um, as far as I know, the EBR-14 is supposed to be, like, it's supposed to be a Mini-14, which is typically, you know, your regular 5.56, 223 rounds. In this case, I think it might be rocking 308, but I'm not sure based on, like, the damage stats that it has. It, it should, it's supposed to be a 223, but compared to your other weapons and how many shots it takes, you know, it doesn't really add up. The M2K Carbine, from what I can tell, is supposed to... I, I could have sworn when this thing dropped, it said it was a 4570, but they changed the description. I could be wrong, but if this thing is a... If this thing is, a, is and was a 4570, I mean, for those of you that don't know what guns are, if this thing's a 4570, it should be a one-shot no matter what. Like, a 4570 is a big old chunk of lead with a lot of powder behind it coming down range. And, um, yeah, like, the, the hit markers you get with this is pretty unrealistic. But it's not a bad gun. Then the Car 98, the Car 98K is, you know, 7.92 uh, Mauser, which all that translates, to my understanding, into an 8mm round. An 8mm round is another big old chunk of bullet. Uh, I'm actually, I'm trying, I'm... I'm trying to get in contact with a guy that I know that has two or three of these rifles, and I'm trying to snag one for myself. So, you know, that'll end up popping up on the shooting channel eventually. Um, but the Car 98K is a fan favorite because of its quick scoping capabilities, and it's a very fun gun to use. The crossbow is a crossbow. It's fun to use as well. I'm going to skip over that. And the SKS is the latest marksman rifle added and it is tons of fun to use as well. Like I said, I got two of them bad boys sitting in my closet, but they are not the uh, the modern synthetic versions. They are the, uh, like if you take and you select the, the SKS and you go over to stock, and then you hit SKS rifle stock, that right there is what the two I got look like, almost like pretty much identical, no joke. Those, uh, you actually see one of them in that first OG shoot video on my shooting channel at some point in the video. Um, but anyway, I said, you know what, that's not important. We need to get back to what we're doing. But there's your marksman rifles. I'm not, it, it's hard to hit up on the attachments on in this like category as a whole because they vary so differently. So with these, just my word of advice is, you know, obviously check out my best class setup videos because they really help. In dealing with the marksman rifle uh, classes because um, just because they're so different um, and we kind of continue that idea with the sniper rifles because with the snipers it, it depends on if you're playing regular multiplayer or if you're 
planning to you know to play warzone because with warzone your objective is going to be actual sniping um which is going to be your your medium at closest if you're smart and then long mainly long range engagements now with the introduction of the Ritek amr which is the barrett 50 cal semi-automatic sniper rifle you can kind of get away with using your your quick scope and fast paced sniper setup in Warzone, but I feel like that's going to get nerfed very soon, like within the next two to four weeks. Um, so don't count on that. You know, I don't know whenever you'll you'll be watching this video, so just check the timestamp and see what's going on and check updated content. Um, when it comes to regular multiplayer at the moment, the Ritek AMR is definitely my favorite with my quick scope, with my quick scope and class setup. Um, but if I'm playing Warzone, I'm still kind of leaning towards the HDR for the longer range engagements because that's primarily what I'm dealing with. And once again, now that we've shifted into what we've shifted into, got it, you're gonna have to look up the best class setup videos on my channel. Um, because like the ARs and the SMGs are where like most of your variation is going to be at and those are probably your most two commonly used weapon uh, categories and once you get into everything beyond that it, it just it really depends on what players prefer and what game mode you're dealing with so with the sniper I mean the AX50 is is a fan favorite for sure and then Dragonov is just you know the black sheep of the family um, and the AX50 is not bad it's just you know if you're dealing with Warzone the drop-off range for this thing is really bad so it can be pretty hard to uh, to get consistent shots consistent kills at longer ranges unless you spend a lot of time playing the game and you really know how to compensate for the distance so the, uh, the so the AMR and the HDR is going to be the way to go but between the the amr which is the barrett 50 cal and the hdr uh you're really going to have to uh adjust your class setup accordingly um so that i mean that's really the main things i have to say about the snipers and then when it comes to your melee section in uh your primary you got the right shield and this thing i mean it's very niche 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 you know what i'm trying to say niche niche that's there we go it's very niche oriented and most people aren't going to use it unless they're going for damascus or gold or or something um it, it when this game first dropped it offered a lot more back end protection than it does now but it still it still holds it on its own in a regular multiplayer in that you can uh, you know if you have um, amped on you can swap between your primary and your secondary faster and you can take advantage of tacticals and lethals and having a good secondary or if you want to throw an overkill you can have this along with another primary uh, which I'm, I'm sure that's why they actually opted to throw this into the primary section instead of the secondary section um but obviously there's no attachments for this thing so there's not a whole lot you can do to it um but check out i have a specific video dedicated to the right shield in terms of getting it gold so if that's what you're if you made it this far if that's what you're here for check that out so now we're going to hop into secondaries and with the secondaries we got handguns launchers and melee and i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this um just because of how things have changed over the the four seasons so far and uh like the, the the pistols is one of the first things that i got gold and platinum so you know you just have to go back and look at my uh my best class setups for these i did do updated versions for each handgun uh the renetti is the one that i that i play that i'm using the most right now in most of my class setups but the x16 is still my favorite not gonna lie like it's very close tie between the x16 and the renetti um if the renetti didn't have the burst option then it would be relatively useless especially since the nerf they they hit they hit it with a while back um but yeah with the with the pistol class setups they're pretty similar and you'll notice that with within my most recent class setup videos for the pistols 
So just, like I said, just search those on my channels and you will not be disappointed. The launchers, I don't even want to recognize them. Uh, but I got a video that is dedicated to the fastest Damascus class setup and that will tell you everything you need to know for those. With the melee, we got the combat knife and the Kali sticks. Um, I haven't unlocked those yet. Have no plan or desire to, because uh, I'm not really in to the to the melee scene uh, in terms of my regular gameplay. And plus, with my current internet issues, it's pretty difficult to do anything melee related. So I just kind of avoid that. But now a big you know, a big thing when it comes to a class setup is perk selection. So, I, I've already, like, what are we? We're probably already, uh, oh my god, yes. Yeah, so, like, we're, we're probably about 25 minutes in, so most, most people ain't going. If you've made it this far, just comment Corona Extra, because that's what I'm drinking at the moment to, you know, keep my whistle wet. Um, but you got perk, you got three perk options. Um, I typically always stay with EOD or Cold Blooded for Perk 1. For Perk 2, I either go Ghost or Hardline. And then for Perk 3, I'm switching between Tune Up, Amped, and Battle Hardened. And those have been the, the three, like, in, the, mo the best and most consistent perks for various game modes. And I have not found myself needing to deviate beyond those for any reason apart from every game mode in this game like you can get really specific depending on play style weapon objective and all that stuff but like in terms of general and you know for what most people are going to be trying to accomplish with their their overall gameplay those are the perks you want to stick with now for lethals um, the fra I like the frag grenade the most just because of how controllable it is like you you know you can cook it you can ricochet it off walls you can bounce it off the ground you can you can get it into very tight places but every lethal option has its own advantage and disadvantage um, for example I mean just like with the frag you know you're not gonna be able to cook it in every situation so when you throw it uh, people do have the opportunity one to throw it back especially to have EOD or if they, even if they don't they can just run away from it as with the Syntex you know it's stationary once it's stuck it, it seems to go off a wee bit faster unlike the frag if you just throw it as soon as you you know you hit your right bump or whatever button you have to throw it C4 is one of the most you know it's it's a stronger explosive but it has like a bit of a slower time uh, to actually throw it and then detonate it, even if you use, you know, you double tap into the X. Uh, throwing nice, very lethal, but you gotta be very accurate. Proximity mines lethal, but people can duck it, you know, even if they don't have EOD and they duck, it ain't gonna hurt them. Uh, thermite, um, it's good to get a reading on if people's in like a tight area that people typically tend to be. And it's controllable, but it's pretty easy to avoid unless you stick somebody with it. Uh, you know, claymores, yeah, claymores are claymores, what can I say about that? And then the Molotov is extremely, you know, you gotta be pretty precise with it. Uh, then going to tacticals, uh, this is really gonna vary depending on if you're playing multiplayer or Warzone. Uh, for example, you know, the heartbeat sensor is something in regular multiplayer, it's gonna be more of a wasted attachment. Uh, com as compared to Warzone where it can be j a huge advantage being able to go in and see where if somebody's in a build or just in your general vicinity. Uh, stem shots, I think they're more, you know, useful in, my, in, in the regular multiplayer, but I've seen them utilized in Warzone accordingly. Um, in Warzone, I do, it's between gas grenades and stun grenades for my favorite. Um, but you can, I mean, with the with the tacticals, you can use them in basically Modern Warfare and, in, in multiplayer and Warzone interchangeably. Just depends on your play style and the weapon thing that you're going with. Okay, guys, so look, I'm out of breath. I'm, I, it's, it's already 2 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I, I've tried to cover everything in just a general aspect and touch on some normally asked questions. 
uh, in terms of setting up classes, I, there's still a lot left to be answered. Like I said, if this video, if I was to touch on everything individually, this video would take me at least two hours. Uh, but I'm still going to be dropping the class setups, but once my graphics card gets here Monday and I get it installed, uh, I'm going to be doing some um, classic, uh, not classic, but custom zombies matches and stuff and some PC content. Uh, I could have been doing that all along, but I just didn't really have any motivation to do it. But now that, you know, I dropped over $1,000 on a graphics card, it's going to be going down. Uh, so I hope you guys will stick around and watch and enjoy that with me while I'm making it. Um, but yeah, look, hit me up with any questions or comments in the comment section. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, uh, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, check out my other videos regarding Modern Warfare, just other gameplay in general. And uh, you guys, as always, just have a good day, I hope you enjoyed, and until the next one, adios.